they, they, they in and out, you know? But Lord willing, they get right. You got some brothers and some sisters that's be in and out that after a while they get all the way right. Mm. That's what we hope for. That's what we come out and hope for. That brothers and sisters get all the way right. Stop playing games with the Lord, man. Come on board and come home and serve him wholeheartedly and truth and sincerity. So you can get your crown. Right. That's what we tell people. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7, Hebrew. Thing is not no game. Why people play with it like it's a game? It ain't no game out here, man. Go ahead and read that. Huh? Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. Bring it up. When a man's ways please the Lord. When a man ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. He make even our enemies to be at peace with us. That's our armor. That's why we keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Right? You can have the book of Hebrews. No, give me the book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 14. Right? Romans, chapter 7 and verse 14. Go. For we know that the law is spiritual. What does the Bible say? For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. What is that armor? Keeping God's laws. Because this is part of the law. Eating, eating, keeping a dietary law, that's part of the law. That's spiritual. You see what I'm saying? Keeping the high holy days. That's spiritual. Keeping the civil laws, that's spiritual. The moral laws, that's spiritual. Everything, the laws is spiritual. That's why he says it. Go ahead and read them one more time for me, y'all. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. But we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal, so under sin. But we are carnal, born into sin. Now we was called. So now that we call, we come back to the light and do the Father's will and truth and sincerity, right? Because there's a reward at the end of that thing. You know, the book of Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, yeah, Second Chronicles, chapter fifteen, verse seven. Hebrew. This is what we chase right here. Second Chronicles, chapter fifteen, and verse seven. Get out. Be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak. Be strong in the Lord, and don't let your hands be weak to serve Him. Go ahead and read. For your work shall be rewarded. Because our works will be rewarded. Everything we put in, all the fast and all the study and all the reading, we're going to be rewarded for that thing. Go ahead and read. And when us has heard these words and the prophecy of our did, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols. See, we heard these words. He stopped playing with the Lord. He put away the abominations, all the idols, and he got down with the get down. The same way Paul did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Our people, we got to stop playing with the Lord, man, and hold on tight to that faith, man. We come in here, this ain't an easy walk, man. Even in the book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1, the Lord tell us from the beginning it's not an easy walk. So we all should have that mind frame, okay, we go, uh, I'm in this thing to die then. I'm signing up. You sign up to the army, you sign up, you got to sign that waiver. You just, just a lot, it's possible that you're going to die in this thing. We come into this thing knowing, should be knowing that we're going to die in this thing. That's right. Go ahead and read what you got. So I write to the two of us one. You know. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. If you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul for temptation. Why? Because we're going to be getting tried out chill. Give me that in the book of James, chapter 1, and verse 12, Hebrews. When we come to serve the Lord, prepare the soul for temptation. Right. Well, James chapter 1 and verse 12. Bring it out. Blessed is the man that endured temptation. But the Lord say, blessed is the man that endured that temptation. Why? Because you're going to get your crown of life. We got to endure it to the end, though. Read it one more time for me, y'all. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endured temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. That's what we want. That, that crown of life. Give me that in the book of James chapter 1 and verse 3, Hebrew. James chapter 1 and verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith. That the what? That the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of our faith worketh patience. Right? We got to be patient in this thing. You got too many brothers and sisters that come in and want the Lord to come right now because they, they right at that time. No, you got to endure. Right? The whole time. Right? Give me that in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, Hebrew. Let's just get out of the scriptures. I want to hear from the words of the Lord. Right? 
Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10, Hebrew, that's why the Lord tells us this right here. Telling us that the trine of our faith, we're going to go through this temptation. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. See that? He's going to keep us from the hour of temptation. That's why he said, he that abide under the shadow of the most high. See what I'm saying? We'll be going to be protected. If you're not keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, you don't have the spirit because the law is spiritual. So you're not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. You're not going to be protected. I don't care who you are. You're not keeping God's high holy days. If you knew this thing for quite some time, you, you will not be protected. Hey, that when the Lord said, a thousand so far at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, that's going to be part of those people who didn't want to keep these things, who didn't want to walk in the spirit, who hated God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Those same children who broke God's covenant, right? And then the book of Psalms, chapter 50 and verse 5, Hebrew. Psalm chapter 50 and verse 5. Bring it out. Gather my saints together Did unto God me. Say? Gather my saints together yeah. unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me. And we was the ones that made that covenant in the wilderness with the Lord. That's All right. 12 tribes. Hey. We made that covenant. Because then you like always, oh, brother, all crazy. How about she have a shot? Come to get some of that frankincense, man. That good smell right there, man. All right. right? Go to read that one more time for me, y'all. Psalm chapter 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. By who? By sacrifice. By what? By sacrifice. Give me that in the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 7 verse 24 because the children of Israel made that covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. We was the ones that was bringing all these different animals to the Lord to sacrifice, to the Levites to sacrifice to make atonement for our sins. We was doing that. All 12 tribes was doing that. Not all nations, not all races, only the children of Israel. But go ahead and read about this covenant that we made. 2nd Ezra chapter 7 and verse 24 by his law had they despised and denied his covenant and what and denied his covenant and the statutes had they not been faithful we have not been faithful right to his laws or his covenant go ahead and have not performed his works we have not performed his works we have to tell our people that what keep god's laws statutes and commandments they, they'll keep the commandments but that law it's just they just don't want to do that we ain't got a word of tassel. Even though Christ wore the tassels and he came to show us how to walk according to his father's will, even though he wore the tassels, they say, no, we ain't got a word of tassels. Christ didn't eat pork, but they say we can eat pork all of a sudden. No, if he didn't eat pork, we can't eat pork. If he ain't eat shrimp, crab, lobster, we can't do it. Right. Right? Hey, give me that in the book of 1 Peter 2.21, Hebrew. 1 Peter 2.21. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. For even here unto you, unto where ye call, because Christ also suffered for us. Christ suffered for the children of Israel. He suffered for us. Leaving us an example. He left us an example. That ye should follow his steps. That we should what? That ye shall follow his steps. That we should follow Christ's steps. But our people not following Christ's steps. These are the same Christian people that say they love God. They don't follow his steps. They say the law's done away with. Prime example. Then you go. Who don't know that? And they, they try to look down on us because we law keepers. They want us to be in the same pot that they ain't know. We're going to drink this cup over here. Y'all drink that cup, then we're going to drink this cup. Right. You see what I'm saying? Give me that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21, Hebrew. Right? Let's read about this thing, man. We over here. Go ahead and read. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 21. Bring it out. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord's table and the cup of devils. You can't do it. It don't work or do not mix. That's what our people try to do. The law is done away with, but God still is in my heart. He knows me. He speaks to me. He talks to me. We got that relationship. All the nonsense. Give me that. That's right. They serve in two masters. Read that in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. 
Matthew 6, verse 24. You can't drink the cup of the Lord's cup and the cup of the devil's. It don't work. Do what you got. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters. Did God say? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will he will hold the one and despise the other. See, the thing is, a lot of our people, we turn our ways for family, loved ones, for money, by working extra days. Like, this is the Sabbath thing. We're supposed to be out here every week. Because the Lord did say, pity first, right? Hey, give me that in the book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 37, Hebrew, right? Let's see what God tells us, man. Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Our people don't understand that. Instead, we trim our ways. Instead of keeping God first and come out to do a Sabbath day, our people will work extra, pick up extra days on the Sabbath day instead of coming out here, they want to work. They pay in that job before the Lord. Same thing. You got a gathering, a family gathering. You're like, okay, I know I put you on the, on the um, highways and hedges, but I'm going to go here. You picking who you serving. You picking the Lord last. You picking family first. Because guess what? All 12 tribes are supposed to be keeping this day home. So because they drunk that cup over there and they're not keeping his Sabbath day holy. I'm keep we keeping the Sabbath day holy, so we over here in the righteous. We're not gonna trim our ways. You understand? You know, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, Hebrew. That's what too many of our people do to trim our ways for love, man. Do what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Why? Because they got that cup cuss over there. You're supposed to have this cup over here, but instead you're trying to mix. You're trying to please keep men. At the same time, you're violating the Lord. Willfully, though. Right? Willfully. No, we're not to do these things. That's right. Go out and pray, you'll be forgiven. Right? But that's not the case. Right? We should read that one more time for me, up. So in Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for with fellowship had un unrighteousness with unrighteousness, and with communion had light with darkness. What communion does righteous have with unrighteousness? What communion do light have with darkness? Look, if you want your crown, you got to do what the Bible says. The Bible says do this, then do it. If the Bible says don't do this, then don't do it. But don't sit there and willfully keep breaking, putting the Lord aside for family and thinking that you are right. That's what a lot of Christians do. They think that they are right. The Lord said those that make themselves scarcely be saved. You never forget Amos 3 and verse 3, Hebrew. Amos 3 and verse 3. For the Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Bring it out. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Did God say? Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in a forest when he has no place? Can two walk together except they be agreed? The wicked is going to agree on the same thing. So hey, I can't have a boy that he's a whoremonger and I'm not, and I'm rolling and chilling with him. He smoke weed all the time, and I'm not, but I'm rolling with him. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, you sure who you belong to, because it's not the Lord. If we're not following this thing, like, okay, when we at our job, we ain't got no choice but to be around unequally yoked. But if you choose to be around women and men that's not of this righteousness, then you're not of God, because we're supposed to. Say that again? That's right. Because guess what? The, the real service of the Lord is supposed to hate, hate evil, right? Mm. We're supposed to hate evil, right? But instead, our people want to mingle with evil. And I wonder why. That's why the Lord be blowing brothers and sisters' candles stick out. Mm. Because they don't want to listen and do what he's saying. He get tired of these lukewarm people that got one foot in and then one foot out. If you're going to serve him, then serve him then. If, you're gonna, if he say, keep this, then keep it. 
Don't sit there and he say, keep this and you go against it. Hey, give me that little book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, Hebrews. Hebrews 10, verse 26. This is what our people love to do, man. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. Bring it up. If we sin willfully. If we do what? If we sin willfully. No, I ain't going to keep the Sabbath day. I'm going to go out with my wife. If we sin willfully, no, I ain't gonna keep the Sabbath. I'm gonna earn a couple of dollars for my job. Well, if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Our people don't take that thing serious enough, right there. You see that? They don't take that serious. Hit it one more time for me, y'all. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But you know what our people do? We make excuses. Always an excuse. Isn't that in the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 18, Hebrew? Luke 14, verse 18. It's always an excuse why I can do this, why I can do that. Wonder brothers wonder why they get jammed up. Go ahead and read that, all. Luke 14, verse 18. Bring it out. And they all with one consent begin to make excuse. Make us what? Make an excuse. They make what? Make excuse. They all begin to, on one, on one accord, they all begin to make excuses. Let's find out and see what they are. Go ahead and read. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I bought some land. I got to go water it. I got to tend to it. I got to make sure it's right. Go ahead and read. And I must need to go and, and see it. And I pray thee, have me excused. I pray you have me excused. I just bought some land. I got to go attend to it. Have me excused, oh Lord. Let's see what the next excuse was. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I bought me some cattle. I got to feed them. I got to give them drink. Go ahead and read. And I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Have me excused, Lord. I can't come on your Sabbath day. I got to bought me some oxen. You know, you know how these animals is. You got to take care of them. Please have me excuse. What's the next excuse, Hebrew? And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. I married a wife. We got to go on our honeymoon. I can't come out to the Sabbath. Even though I got six days to plan my honeymoon in advance, but you know you know how the weekends is. It be drunk <laughs> out here, you know what I'm saying? So I actually want you to have me excuse. That's Luke 14, 18. Luke 14, 18. That just had you come forward, brother, because that bus was loud to say. But go ahead and read that one more time straight through for me, huh? Luke chapter 14, verse 18. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs to go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Verse 19. And another said, I have brought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray you, have me excused. Verse 20, and another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. Let's see what the Lord said. So that servant came and showed his, showed his Lord these things. The servant came and showed his Lord these things. The servant came and told the Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry. Being what? Being angry. Being what? Being angry. No, happy. Being angry. No, sad. Being angry. He was angry. Say that. Go ahead and read. So he's angry. Why? Because they're coming with excuses why we can't do this. Lord's that thing. Coming with excuses why you can't keep these laws that the commandments. Coming with excuses why you breaking the law, statutes, and commandments willfully. He told you what to do. It ain't your fault if you go on the lake. It ain't his fault if you go on that lake of fire. It's yours. Because you had the same instruction that we all had to make it. He gave us an equal playing field. He gave, he all gave us all his children the same thing. They all got to keep them. If you don't keep them, you go on the lake of fire. So those that make it in the lake of fire, it's going to be long in the state of fire. Are we going to be feeling pity when they're in the lake of fire? No. It's going to be a, a whoring for them. It's going to be a disgusting thing for them that make it to see our people that transgress the laws of our Lord. Y'all did that. We had, we had to go through the fire. We all got to go through the fire to make it. Huh. Hey, give me that. In the book of 1 Peter 1 and verse 7, Hebrew. 1 Peter 1 and verse 7. We all got to go through the fire. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 7. Ain't no shortcuts. Go ahead and read. 
that the trial of your faith, that the what? That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. Read that one more time for me, y'all. Verse Peter said the one in verse seven. Bring it out. The trial of your faith. The trial of your faith. Being much more precious than of gold. It's more precious than gold. The trial of our faith. Why? Because when you when, when you, when you find some gold, you melt it down, you gotta pit it through the fire to get all the purities up out of it. Get all the, 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 the disgusting things up out of it. When you pit it through that fire, it burns off all the filthiness and it becomes pure. It don't be ten carried. It don't be 14 carat, it be a hundred carat, right? So that's how it is for us when we go through these trials. That's why we endure, because it makes us better, right? We learn from it. That's what it's saying. We get this purity, this filthiness up off of us when we keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Go, say that again. There you go, it makes us stronger. Go ahead and read. Being much more precious than a bow that perishes Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, whom having not seen, ye love and that's one. God, that's it on that. Um, right? Give me the book of Zachariah. You about to be out up? You about to be out? Come. You can't just come over here and just be with no. I got to prove you first, King, to see where your soul at, to see where your spirit at, to actually see where your heart is at, brother. Give me that book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 7, mm -hmm. right? Sirach 6, and verse 7. This is what I got to do. See, I'm going to listen to this. I'm going to listen to the Lord. Sirach, chapter 6, and verse 7. Bring it up. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Did God say? If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. No rush. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. In order to prove somebody, that means you got to get the known, right? You got to get the known. If you find a, 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 a girl, a good girl, she, you looking for her to be your rib, you can't rush in to have sex with her. No, you got to see where her heart at, see where her mind at mentally. See if she really got that connection with you. You got to prove her. Don't just rush into it. We got to prove each other, right? You got to earn this spot here, King. We want you here without a doubt. But we also know that we don't take no nonsense because the Lord don't take no nonsense, so we can. We want all the fight to be on one accord like we're supposed to be, King. That's love, right? Um. Give me that in the book of Sirach 37 and verse 14, I believe. 37, 14. Sirach, to the 37, verse 14. You know. For a man's mind is sometimes wrong. Nope, give me that in the 13. 37 and 13. The 12. 37 and 12. Sirach, to the 37, verse 12. But be continually with a godly man. What did God tell us? But be continually with a godly man. No, be unequally yoked. But be continually with a godly man. The Lord tell us we got to be continuously, not sometimes. Continuously with a godly man, with your brother. Go ahead and read. When thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind. See that? That's why we gotta prove people. Make sure they mind is on the same mind as who? The Lord. Right? Because if we all got the same mind, that's one mind. We operate in one vehicle, right? Like today, man, this brother is on the same accord, right? We're on the same accord. We, we getting it through the spirit. But the spirit is dealing with us. These scriptures is coming out in all praises. Because I was kind of worried when I left oh. the cricket. <laughs> but all praises. But read that one more time for me, y'all. So I read to the 37 verse 12. But be continually with a godly man, when thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, whose mind is according to thy mind, and will we'll soar with thee if thou shalt miscarry. In the book of Ephesians, chapter, uh, what I want, 9 and verse. Two. Uh -uh. I forgot that. Ephesians 10 is no. Uh -uh. I said Ephesians. Lord have mercy. Ecclesiastes. 
Um, chapter 10. I still ain't got it. Ecclesiastes 10. Uh, what I'm looking for? Oh, two walk together. No, 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 that's not it. Nah, you said that already. That's uh, Amos 33. If your brother that, fall, lift him up. Oh, come on. Um, that? That's Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 3. That ain't it. Oh, okay. Tell the sheep that when ain't no sheep left, we run it out of script, then we can pack it up. But as long as sheep out here, we gotta stay out here. Okay. Now if the sun go down, it's dark, the Sabbath day over. It's up to us if we want to continue to stay out. You see what I'm saying? But this is the Sabbath day. We ain't got nothing better to do but to prophesy. Right? Mm. Yeah. right? Yeah. Otherwise we're gonna go home and just chill and do nothing. Watch videos. Well, I wouldn't say that because it is the Sabbath day. It's the Sabbath day. If we're supposed to be keeping it holy. So if we're keeping this day holy, then we'll be either reading, laid back, chilling, or watching videos on YouTube of brothers out here doing this. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know what I mean, it's just that relaxing day. It's the day to chill, pick the feet up, pray right. the word. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Go out in the backyard, burn some frankincense to mirth, feel the breeze, look at our little bit of creation. You know what I'm saying? Get in the spirit. Hey, play some music. Oh. Throw that Hebrew music on. Get in the spirit. Right? Get crunk in righteousness. Oh. You know what I'm saying? It's all crazy, but that's this is what this thing is about, man. It's about growth. Right? Let me, let me see what I want. Um, let's get a... Uh, I'm going to take one more and then I'm going to... Okay. It, it, what, any any questions? What you want us to touch on? I don't know. You was rolling. Okay. All, pra all praise. I'm trying to think. <laughs> All right. I think you covered any questions I had. You already answered. All praise. <laughs> and hey, that's what we out here for. Because the question that that ignite me again, ignite that fire, get me going again. You know, because that's what the thing is about, man. It's about loving your brother and having respect for your brother, man. Being your brother's keeper. That's what this thing is about, man. Right? Walking in the spirit of righteousness, man, and pitting away these lies. Right? Hey, give me that in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. Luke 9, 62. Luke, chapter 9, and verse 62. Bring it out. And Yahusha said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow. No man having put his hands to the plow, meaning put his hand to the work, coming out here and doing the work. No man have put his hand to the work. Go ahead. And looking back. But you looking back, looking back where? To the world, to the old things. You're too busy. I got this to do. I got that to do. Any man putting his hands to the plow and looking back, go ahead. It's fit for the kingdom of God. They, they fit for the kingdom of God? It's fit for the kingdom of God. Read that one more time from the, straight from the top of me, y'all. And Yahushua said to him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. No man that's having put his hands to the plow, but you looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. We gotta, we gotta go, we gotta get the kingdom. Come. That's what this thing is about. Right? Making time for the Lord. Even now in the book of Sirach, chapter 32, verse 17, Hebrew. Right? That goes back to them excuses. That goes back oh. to them excuses, right? I got I can't I can't beat the Lord. Yeah, See that? It goes back to Luke. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Go ahead and read that. Right. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 17. A simple man will not be reproved. A simple man will not be corrected. Go ahead and read. But that an excuse. But do what? But that is an excuse. But he will find that excuse, right? Go ahead and read, huh? According to his will. According to his will. He find an excuse according to his will. Why I can't do it. Oh, you know, you know, I gotta go pick up my arms. You know how my arms be, man. You know, so but yeah, I, I get up at y'all mighty kings later. The Lord ain't dealing with that. It's a Sabbath day. Your mom's supposed to be keeping the Sabbath too. Everybody's supposed to be on one accord, but because we're not on one accord, because so many evil people out here, I'm gonna tend to the Lord first. I'm gonna pick the Lord first and make sure I'm out here every Sabbath day. Come. Through the spirit of Yahweh, Shem Yahweh, Shah. That's what we gotta do. We 
can't make excuses to the Lord because why? Because the Lord sees us. He sees our work. He sees what we do. Uh, we're in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 3, Hebrew. Right? And that's what we'll be supposed to be doing, doing everything in secret to please him. Go ahead and read that. Proverbs, chapter 15, and verse 3. Yeah. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Go ahead. Upholding the evil and the good. Upholding the evil and the good. Go ahead and read. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein is a branch of the spirit. See that? See that? So we got to understand who we serving and how to serve. Don't have serving. Don't be in this thing in one foot out. One foot in and one foot out. The Lord ain't dealing with that. Give me the book of Revelation chapter right. 13 verse 16. Hebrew. 316. Revelation 316. Uh -huh. Lord ain't dealing with that lukewarm spirit, man. If we're going to serve the Lord, we ain't. Go to read that. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it out. So then because thou art lukewarm. Because thou art lukewarm. And neither cold nor hot. You're not cold or you're not all the way hot. I will spill thee out of my mouth. He's going to spill you out of his mouth, man. He's going to spit you out. That's what the Lord is saying. Right? right? Hey, give me the book of 2 Peter's. 2 and verse 20, Hebrew. 2 Peter's 2 20. Right? 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, after we have escaped the pollutions of the world, what is the pollutions of the world? Loving the world, the things of the world, that's the pollutions. It pollutes us. Yeah, right? Yeah. Right, because you whoremonger, it pollutes us. Lying, deceiving, and manipulating people, yeah. it, it, it you see what I'm saying? It pollutes us. Yeah. All the things of this world pollutes us. Yeah. But keeping the commandments, we walk in righteousness. Right. Read that one more time for me, y'all. Said that Peter, chapter 2 and verse 20, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord. Through the knowledge of the Lord. Because that's, that's how we escape. By keeping the laws, that's the commandments. So after we escape the pollutions of the world, and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, they are again entangled therein. But they go back and be entangled back in the world again. And overcome the later end. It's worse than them that than the beginning. It's worse than them than the beginning. Read oh. straight through without knowing the reference. Hebrew. Said the Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Mashiach, they are again entangled therein, overcome the later end. It's worse them than them than the beginning. It's oh, worse wow. than it was than the beginning. When you come in here and you so play both sides. So you, you, you fall into the truth and then you slip again. That's worse than if, you never, if you never did that at all. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. That's why it's so important for brothers that come to this knowledge. And then go back into the world, wow. you get a harsher punishment. Yeah, wow. I mean, you're getting a harsher. That's, give me the book of Shabbat 21, verse 11. Wow. Hebrew. That's, that's why it's so important for us to get this knowledge and cleave to it. Shabbat to the 21, verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. But he that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. We get the understanding when we keep in God's law. Daniel 10 and verse 12, Hebrew. We got to be keeping these laws. We got to be diligent in these laws, man. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Why? Because we got so many people that keep reading the Bible. We need to come out here on the highways and hedges, but not keeping it. They still not keep They think they good. In their own mind, they think they are good. But meanwhile, they throwing all types of filthiness, but they're not... Oh, by applying this as they out in the world, right? We got to apply this. We got to be looked at as that godly man, no matter where we go. At the workplace, the workplace is supposed to know that that brother, that, that brother's a believer, he believes in God. Um. He ain't getting into the business. He believes that brother believes in God. Let's just stay away from him. You know what I'm saying? If you're not known in your family as that brother that believes in God, oh, he believes in God. That's the, he God for a man. Then you like everybody else. Because why? If people can't identify you as being a godly man, that's because you're not a godly man. Uh -huh. You're not different from everybody else. Why? Because you're on the same plan for as everybody else. You talk about the same nonsense that everybody else talk about. You don't 
correct nobody, you don't reprove nobody, right? You doing the same thing that everybody else. You ain't, you ain't no godly man. You, 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 you're actually a hypocrite. Oh. And you're deceiving yourself. What did he do? They were chapter 10, verse 5. Bring it and up. I ten, ten and, uh, uh, 12. They were chapter 10 and Solomon, brother. All, all right, praises. Right. Calm. They were chapter 10 and verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day. Who are you talking to? That's what I want Daniel talking to. All right, let's check this out. Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall be wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. None of the wicked is going to understand these scriptures. Why? Because the wicked, they really don't believe. They don't have true faith that the Lord is going to come through and deliver us, right? They don't have true faith that the Lord is going to come out and make a way. They don't believe they got to do it themselves, right? They lean into their own understanding. That's right. Read that one more time for me, y'all. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 10. Many shall be purified and made right and tried, but the wicked shall be wickedly Show through wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. The wicked don't understand what we do. That's why they think, because we're two different people. They're the wicked and we're the righteous. We understand the light, but the darkness cannot comprehend the light. Right. You know the book of Proverbs 419, Hebrew? Right? They don't understand. A lot of people don't understand, but all praise to you. How about you? How about you? On the right side. Uh -huh. Go ahead and what you got. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 19. The way of the wicked is the darkness the as way darkness. of the wicked as, as darkness. Read one more time for me, y'all. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Spark away. Good. 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They know not at what they stumble. They stumble, but they truly don't know what they stumble. They don't understand the punishment and judgment that's going to come upon them. They truly don't understand. Right? We know in the book of Psalms 82 and verse 5, Hebrew. The wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 82 and verse 5. Bring it up. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk, they walk on in darkness. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. The whole foundations of the earth are out of course because of the 12 tribes walking in darkness. So now we're just walking in a big melting pot. Right. right? Evil everywhere. Right? Righteous in the light is just a small matter in the midst of the darkness. Read it one more time straight through for me, y'all. Psalm chapter 82 and verse 5. Bring it out. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Revelation 22 and verse 10, Hebrew. Right? The whole foundation of the earth is all out of course because we're walking in darkness. We're not keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments, so we're not protected. Right? Any and everything can happen to you. You up for grabs. Uh -huh. You ain't got the Lord with you up for grabs. Go ahead and read what you got. Revelation 22 and verse 10. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. For the time is at 